Beach Boy Records, but I've never surfed in my life. I was what they called you a ho dad. You grew up in a surf community. I was a phony. I did. On Long Island, Gilgo Beach, Jones Beach, people surfed. I didn't. Have you yeah. ever surfed? Never. Ever. Never, right? Never gonna. No. No. no I'm no either. daredevil. Uh-uh. Nope. I'm afraid of the water. I'm not going to any bullfights either. Welcome to PTI, <laughs> boys and girls. In today's episode, the Wizards reportedly deal Bradley Beal. <laughs> Fernando Tatis Jr. is crushing it in right field, and Shohei keeps doing Shohei things. But we begin today with Wyndham Clark taking a Sunday lead that once was as many as three shots and winning the U.S. Open yesterday by one shot over Rory McIlroy, who made a birdie on number one to tie for the lead and never made another. Wilbon, you watched all day and into the night, as I did. Yep. Would you yep. rather talk about who won or who didn't? Tony, I go back and forth on this. Well, you, you and I started this conversation on your podcast this morning, and I know I, I wanted to talk about Wyndham Clark because I don't know anything about him. Like, it's, it, 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 we got late in the round, and as he got toward 15, 16, 17, I said, let me start looking up Wyndham Clark because I don't know Jack other than he transferred from Oklahoma State to Oregon. I know he had his mom yeah. pass away while he was in college. That was yep. a tough transition for him like it would be for anybody else. And I'm thinking this he guy kept his poise. Yes, he lives I near know. you. He does. He's a Scottsdale guy. He's right out yeah. the back of the studio. And you and Charles yeah, Barkley informed me that now. he's my neighbor. Right. Literally that's in right. the same street, yeah. I find out today. Yeah, that's great. Wyndham Clark. Yeah, Wyndham, great. come over. Have some peanut butter and crackers later today. Are you yeah. kidding me? Way to be but on let's top talk of about... things. It's very good. Man. Top of things. <laughs> it's good. Let's talk about who didn't win instead. I'm going to change up. Rory, okay. Tony. Rory fascinates me. He fascinates me because he's still great. He's right there. He's right there at almost every major. He's in contention. He's hitting great shots. He's bombing the ball down fairways 370 yeah. yards at times. And he's burning the edges. He's right there, and he can't win. And I'm not going to say, I don't know that I agree with him. He says he's closer. I don't know that he's closer. He's never far, but I don't know there's a breakthrough either. It's kind of confusing. Yeah. I find myself rooting for him, but he doesn't cash in anymore. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't root for him because he doesn't live in Scottsdale like no, he Wyndham doesn't. Clark does. So Florida, Florida guy. All right. Yeah. So I I'm sorry to say this, but Rory McIlroy is supposed to beat Wyndham Clark. Rory McIlroy has four Why? majors. Why? Wyndham <laughs> Clark's, I'm telling you. If you pay attention and watch the show, I'll you'll pay learn. Pay attention. <laughs> four majors. Wyndham Clark's best finish in a major, I was told today, was a tie for 75th. Rory yeah. tied for the lead on number one and never made another birdie. Mike on number eight. Number eight was the worst moment for Rory McIlroy because he missed a four-foot putt for birdie that would have put him again in a tie and put pressure on Wyndham Clark. He's in the group ahead of Clark. So Clark would have heard. He would have heard the roars if Rory did anything great. I know he and, couldn't and make it, the putts. It simply never happened. Let me say this about Wyndham Clark, though. He earned this. He was steady. He was deserving. Yes. He made great chip shots time after time after time. Yes. And as Rory's lad putting was tremendous because he was within inches, within inches of the cup, All it the never time. actually fell in. And Wyndham Clark's fell in. So he is deserving. Now, he may be a one-time winner. He may be sort of like Michael Maybe. Campbell or Webb Simpson. But he was deserving in this moment, I thought. Yes, he was. Tony, but that's I, why I but can't Rory say that. I can't say like that Saint Rory should have won. Year. At one point, he, Rory had to win his first. And he must have beaten people in a field that included Tiger and Phil. And you can't say, well, they should have won it. It's close to 10 years since yeah. he has won a major. This happened you know at St. Andrews. He lost to someone who had not won a major before. He Tony, played well, Tony, but not well of, enough. A lot of guys don't get to four. Most that's of them right. don't get to four. Most don't get to one. Most. Yeah, Most that's right. don't. Man. Yeah. But my neighbor, my neighbor has one. Apparently. I told you. Yeah, I told you he was your neighbor. <laughs> you didn't even know. Didn't I even. didn't know. Less than, I don't, you don't borrow sugar from people across the fence anymore. So who the hell knows? Less than a week after reports that the Wizards, your Wizards, were investigating the market for Bradley Beal, the team reportedly yeah, dealt him to the Phoenix Suns for Chris Paul, Landry Shamit, a bunch of second-round picks and a pick swap. Beal now yeah. joins fellow All-Stars Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. 
Tony, where does this put the Suns, and where does it leave your Wizards? Okay. So this was a straightforward salary dump by the Wizards. Right. They, right. they didn't want Bradley Beal anymore. They got nothing back. They got no quality players back. You say they got a bunch of second-round picks. You package them for something else. They don't really do anything for you, and I don't believe, maybe you do, because you're close with them. I don't believe Chris Paul will ever play a single minute for no, the Washington no. Wizards. They looked Not at happening. Bradley Beal, and they said, you know, he's hurt a lot lately. We can't afford him. We don't win with him. He doesn't, we don't win any games. So let's get rid of him. Let's start from scratch, which is what they're going to do. And where does this leave them? It leaves them where they should be, like near the bottom. Bradley Beal may be great with Phoenix as a third or fourth option. He was not really particularly effective with the Wizards. What does it do for Phoenix? Mike, you and I talked about this. I was amazed that Kendrick Perkins went on television today and said Phoenix is the best team in the NBA. And I thought to myself, what? What are you talking about? They, at the moment, they got a lot of scoring. They don't have a point guard. You don't know that Booker can do this. You don't know that Beal can do this. Beal gets hurt a lot. Kevin Durant gets hurt a lot. Their center cannot handle Nikola Jokic at all. So how exactly are they better than Denver? Well, Tony, they don't even have I don't any know that they're bench. better than Denver. I, I was interesting because I listened to J.J. Reddick talk about this, and he loves the move as well. And I'm, I'm not going to say I'm skeptical. I just don't know where it leaves them, and I don't think they're finished. They may still trade Aiton, and they may need okay. to get two bigs or a big and a wing for Aiton, Tony. May. I don't know, and maybe they don't know. Tony, the day of just slapping together super teams is pretty much over, but the Suns went in that direction because you're not going to be able to sustain it financially with the new model that has been newly bargained, collectively bargained by management and players. So that's not going to work for very long. It's like a, a year or two window. But, Tony, let me say this. Nobody can stop Joker. So don't let's not pin that on Aiden, okay? Nobody in this era who plays big man basketball can touch Aiden, period. There are no shacks. There's none Jokic. of that out there. They're, they're, they're not. Okay, yeah. so right. maybe you have to – what did I say? I meant, to, I meant Jokic. There, you yeah, have you to Jokic. maybe outscore him. Maybe you have to put together a team with three 30-point guys and go for it that way. But you so know what they did, Mike? it's going to be interesting to see, Tone. Yeah. You know basketball better than I did. They went no, small. They went they small. They did. I don't you like small. You look at the history of NBA. Right. You look at the history of NBA teams that try to go small, I and they try like to put small. together guards, and they try to put yeah. together Harden and Irving or something, and then they don't win. They, they don't, don't win, ultimately. They don't. We move Your on. Knicks. Your Knicks did it. Your Knicks did it in the early 1970s. Monroe and Frazier. Well, they, they did it. But they had. Whoa, stop. They had Willis Reed. They had the captain. They had Dave. What are you talking about? They had great yeah. bigs. They had the they Busher, did. Yeah. Fernando Tatis Jr. had an outstanding day yesterday. He scored from first on a fielder's choice in an overthrow where he took third and home. He made a great throw to the plate as well. And suddenly, people are suggesting that Tatis, who played shortstop before, may now be the best right fielder in baseball. Wilbon, what do you make of the reinvention of Fernando Tatis Jr.? Tony, I don't consider it a reinvention. I consider it an evolution. I mean, and this is why I would scold you when you got on the Padres, and somebody else did this too, escapes me, for collecting shortstops. Collecting shortstops is the smartest thing you could do. It's like in the NBA if you could collect six, eight wing players. It's the best thing you could do because, Tony, those shortstops, and you know this because we played at a time where the shortstop in every neighborhood was the best, best player athlete. in the neighborhood at everything. Yes. Best athlete. Yes. That kid yes. could pitch, yes. field, hit. Dunk the basketball, That's right. skate. That That's kid right. could play tennis if he didn't pick up a racket. That Cal Ripken Jr. There haven't been, I don't know, there haven't been that many athletes in the history of baseball better than Cal Ripken Jr. You can call him a shortstop. He could dunk a basketball standing under the rim at six foot four, two hands. He's the greatest athlete. Tatis is being developed. He's the greatest athlete. Put him in right field. Put him wherever you want, Tony. This is smart player development. Yeah, I don't want to sit here and say, hold on a minute, Sparky, but I'm finding myself saying, hold on a minute, Sparky. And what he got? So he's, he's maybe a wonderful right fielder at the moment, and he, I believe, leads the National League in outfield assists with seven. But what's his team there doing? There you go. His team's in fourth place. 
His team is under 500 at the moment, so I don't want to get too carried away, though I will say that it is amazing what happens when you finally get rid of Ringworm. You can become a great player. <laughs> what I'm happy to say about him is that he seems to have taken what happened to him last year seriously. He is not pouting about being in the outfield. He's not saying, you better put me back at shortstop or I quit. He's not doing anything like that. And as you say, he is a great athlete. And players are now comparing him, players on his own team, to Mookie Betts and to Ichiro, who are two of the great right fielders like of all time. Yeah, Mookie ever. Betts with six gold gloves, Ichiro with ten. And Mookie Betts is important in this, Mike, because he's a Mookie? converted infielder. Yes. He's a converted infielder. Yes. yes. So that matters. It does Come matter. Come on now. It does. Let's take a break. Coming up, Shohei homered twice over the weekend, but did Mike Trout do something even more significant? And the Giants sweep the Dodgers. What's going on beside Marine Layer in L.A., June Gloom? You know what's who true is the best about athlete Fernando in your Tatis. neighborhood? Who oh, was the best athlete in, my in your neighborhood? Steven Pearsall was the best athlete. What? What's true about Tatis is that he's a great star already. I mean, you, you want him to do that. Yeah. Time to find out what's on the minds of the masses and mail time. That is alliterative. Mail time? Got. I don't even need my glasses. Who should feel better about his weekend, Shohei Otani or Mike Trout? Well, Tony, to, to me, this one's easy. It's Mike Trout. I mean, Mike Trout was mired, as we used to say and write, in a slump, a deep one. I mean, the, 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 the months of May and June were just dreadful for him. And he yes, went 5-4-11, yes. Tony, 5-4-11. Now, he only had one home run in there, but that is such a good start. Because, Tony, we were speculating about whether he was having back issues, which seemed to relate back to last year, a slump, which wasn't as quite as prolonged. I mean, look, Shotani, Otani is great all the time, Tony. He's great. Shohei is great. But Trout, they Here's need Trout if they're going yes. to sustain this in California, in Anaheim, and so I'm going to say Trout, you know, not Shohei. I agree. I agree. It's more important to Trout um, because there was some talk that he couldn't get around on a fastball anymore. And if you can't get around on a fastball, you're out of the league. What are you doing? So yeah. hitting, getting five hits in 11 at-bats is a big deal. There's another reason as well, though, Mike, that it's more Mechanic. important to Trout. Because right now, the Angels are in second place. They're a playoff team right now. They have gone ahead of Houston in the American League West. And if they make the playoffs, it's reasonable to believe that Otani will consider re-signing with them. And then Otani and Trout can bat back-to-back -back for X amount of years, maybe with yeah. some success. So there's a, a double win here for Trout. Not only does he hit, but it's a possibility that Otani stays. What happened, Mel, what happened to your boy Rendon? Where is Rendon? He was a World he's, Series it, hero, and then what, yeah. ha, ha, what happened? He's hurt all the, he's hurt all the time. After Man. this weekend sweep, do you come to praise the Giants or question the Dodgers? I'm going to question the Dodgers. The Giants have just sort of been on a milk carton for a long time. The Dodgers, Tony, I mean, look, the Dodgers, what do you think of first with them? You think of pitching. I think of Dodger dogs, and I think of pitching. And so the, the Giants did move ahead of the Dodgers in the standings, but that's less important to me than where the Dodgers pitching is or isn't. The worst pitching ERA they've had since they left Brooklyn. This is that's insane. Right. That's 1957, right? It's so long yeah, ago then. you can't even, after leading the league in ERA four straight years. So to me, I'm questioning the Dodgers first. Let me give you those numbers, because the numbers okay. are so high that they're scary. Right now, their team ERA is 466. That's the hey. worst, as you said, since Brooklyn. Their bullpen ERA is 504. That's 29th out of 30 baseball teams. You can't win any games. The only dependable starter they've had so far is Kershaw. So you're right. They're 12 and 18 out of the last 30, and they're in third place. The story is the Dodgers, but let me give the Giants a little bit of credit because after winning 107 games two years ago, they went all the way down to 81 last year. That's minus 26. 
They were below 500 this year till early June. They appear to be in turnaround, and that yeah, is a good sign for the Giants. plenty of time to praise enough, them. Plenty of time. Yeah, enough email. Let's take one last break, but still to come, the U.S. men top Canada. What does that mean? I have no idea, so I will ask Will Bond. Yeah, I don't even know who my neighbors are. How am I going to know that? Canada, that's a long you way don't. away. Yeah. Well, Max Scherzer, your boy, get back on track tonight. We're going to ask fanboy Anthony Kornheiser. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Clark. Can I borrow some milk? <laughs> I'm your neighbor. I mean, I could drive into him on the way. Tonight on SportsCenter at 6 Eastern, how the Suns' blockbuster deal for Bradley Bill could help close the gap on the Nuggets. Plus, what testing free agency could mean for Draymond Green's future with the Warriors. Also, the latest on Saquon Barkley's standoff with the Giants and potential landing spots for Dalvin Cook. SportsCenter, 6 Eastern on ESPN. Happy time, people. Happy 24th birthday, Jordan Poole. Right after another like this, it's like, what are you doing? He just, he, he at this point, he, he stopped pulling the rope and wanted to go, and now justifiably, he's gone. Great coach for a yeah. long time. You're right. We go to the big finish. The United Let's States men's national team beat Canada 2-0 to win the CONCACAF Nations yeah. League. Is that significant? Tony, I think so. It feels like there's something brewing here. Like there's some momentum. I know we're three years away from the next World Cup, but eh, something seems to be going on. It's good. U.S. women's team captain Becky Sauerbrunn will miss this summer's World Cup with a foot injury. That's a big loss, isn't it? Yes. I mean, she's older than most of the women on the team, but she's the captain. That's how much they respect her. Max Verstappen led every lap in winning the Canadian Grand Prix. Is that significant? Listen to this curiously. Did it with a dead bird lodged in his brake duct. Tied Aaron, uh, Aaron and Senna with his 41st career victory, by the way. Max Scherzer, your boy, faces the Strohs tonight. Is he going to get back on track? I hope so. It's tough here so far. 4 4 5 ERA. Maybe you got to get the goop back. Last one, Lou Williams retired. How will you remember his career? Probably the greatest sixth man of all time with apologies. To John Havlicek, Jamal Crawford, Vinnie Johnson, and your dear friend Phil Jackson. Apologies to them. But Sweet Lou really did it, Tony, for 17 years. He was great at it. That is so nuts to say he's better than Havlicek. That's so crazy. We're out of Havlicek time. Became a We're starter. To be better the next time. Paul Collins, hole in one. Shout out. Six man. Pay attention. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. Havlicek became a starter. Now here's Sports Center.